In this video, we're going to go over how to animate 3D motion track text, similar to how they did in the On The Line music video by Yeet. If you're new here, be sure you're subscribed with that notification bell rang, because like I said, I'm going to be uploading every day, and I'm giving away so much sauce, VFX-wise, business-wise, everything that you're going to need to know as a video editor. With that being said, there's a lot of different ways you can animate text, so you can really get creative with this style. I'm going to be showing you the basics and also how to sauce it up to make it look really good. So let's get into After Effects and show you how to do that. So here in After Effects, this is my version of the effect from the video, and you can see here the text animates in really nice and smooth. There's a nice blur. There's a nice flicker. There's even drop shadow and they're layered like this. And obviously it is motion track to this building back here. So it's kind of like floating in space. So to get started, all you really need is a clip where you want the 3D text to be floating. I would say it's easier if you have some really clear footage and there's some depth between the subject and the object that you want motion tracking. That way you can just give that illusion of some depth. For some reason, I downloaded the footage in 720p. So it's really blurry and it's a pretty shaky clip as well. So this is probably like worst case scenario, but that's all right because we're still going to get something that looks really good. So if you have cleaner footage, more stable footage, you're definitely going to have a lot easier of a time. So first, we just need to track our footage. So to do that, you can go up to the tracker window. If you don't see it, you can go to window up here and then go to tracker. Make sure that's selected. And it's going to pop up somewhere on your screen. Then next, just click on your footage and go to track camera. It's going to say analyzing a background, step one of two. Depending on the quality of your footage and how long your clip is, it might take a few minutes and it looks like for us, it's already done. And then if After Effects doesn't crash, let's see, looks like we're good. You're going to see these dots pop up on your screen. And if you go in between three of them, if you just hover your mouse over, you're going to see a bunch of different planes. So for these points, you just want to line up the plane of this target with the building or whatever you're motion tracking to. So you can kind of see how it almost looks like it's flat on the building. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you can get, the easier it's going to be. Then I'm going to right click and create text and camera. It's looking pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's moving around too much. So that's kind of what you're looking for. If it's jittering around and it looks like the text is swinging around, you can go ahead and delete the 3D camera tracker and the text and just find a new point until you find something that works. So now let's just go ahead and type, I don't know, and I'm going to make this white. And then we're going to have how pop up in front of it, like we did in the example. So you just line it up with your audio. You can see, I don't know how we'll add on how in a second and we'll have it pop up above this, but I just want to place the text in the right spot first. That way we can duplicate it and it'll be a lot easier. But right now I'm just going to turn on motion blur. That's already going to make it look a lot better. And you can see, obviously it's going in front of Yeet. So we'll have to fix that here in a second, but let's get the text kind of all situated first and we can fix that a little bit later. So just open the transform options and, and the 3d options should already be selected. If you don't have this selected, make sure it is. And then you're just going to want to make it almost fit like it's facing the right way. And that's looking a lot better already. You can see it looks like it's motion tracked to that pole. I do want to bring it closer to the camera, make it feel like it's floating a little bit off of that pole. So I just brought the position up. We can position it. If you just click and drag, you can position it as well. And I also just want to use that same font. If you're interested, this font I'm using is called Gil Sans Ultra Bold. And I'm also going to just tighten up the spacing between the letters and kind of just stylize it a little bit more the way I like it. That looks pretty good. And it's kind of nice because there's these subtitles down here. So we don't have to listen to the audio on repeat. But basically what you would do is if you have the audio, just turn on the audio here and line it up with what the object is saying. So for Yeet, I don't, know how tell I don't know how and we'll have how pop up when how is said. We can turn off this audio though because we don't really need it. And we're going to go ahead and just duplicate that layer, trim it to right where how is said. And I'm going to highlight that whole entire phrase and type how. I like that. And then change it to a different color. For us, we're going to be using just green, and position it where we want. For this, I kind of had it just rotated a bit as well. That way it just has a little bit more of a stylized look. Like it's kind of separated from the phrase. And before we sauce up the text and make it look really good, let's go ahead and mask out Yeet. That way we can put the font behind him. So just duplicate the actual video layer. Let's drag it above. We can delete that 3D camera tracker and we can cut it to where the text actually starts popping up and then just use the rotoscope tool and mask out. And then once you're done, just click freeze. And now we can see the font is now behind Yeet here and we just want to go ahead and feather this a little bit so it looks a little smoother. Now when we play that, you can see the font is motion tracked back here. I do want to change the angle of text. It kind of just looks a little off to me. Now, if you do go ahead and change the 3D settings of one of the fonts, you can see now the how is colliding. So all we have to do is open up the transform options and just copy the values. As long as they're not keyframed, all you have to do is copy the values in one spot, the X, Y, and Z, and now it will be lined up properly. And we might have to bring the position forward just a bit as well. So to get started animating, I'm going to keyframe the scale and then I'm going to go a few frames forward and then I'm going to bring it to there. And then we can go back to the beginning and change the size. That way it kind of pops up like this. You can also keyframe the opacity if you want, starting at something like maybe 50 and then have it go to 100. Let's go ahead and now add on something like Gaussian blur. I'm just going to keyframe it to 
a decent amount at the start. And then we can go a few frames forward, maybe a little bit longer than it takes to pop in and just turn that down to zero. Or you can have a slight layer just left on it if you want to give it that little texture. I'm gonna easy ease all those keyframes as well. Now let's go ahead and add some kind of glow just to give it a little bit more atmosphere of a feel. We're just gonna use the default glow in After Effects and let's turn down the intensity just a bit. You can play around with the radius to see what you like. And the last thing I'm gonna add on is a drop shadow. That's just gonna give it the feeling of a little bit more depth. I'm gonna turn the opacity to 100. You can change the position of the drop shadow. I'm just going to have it down to the right a bit. And then let's make that softness just a little bit more as well. Now I'm actually just going to copy and paste all three of those effects onto the next text. And let's make sure those keyframes are lined up like the blur. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the scale and opacity. Now let's go ahead and scale down the how, but you can see when I do go ahead and do that, it's not scaling from the dead center of how, and I want it to. So to fix that, we can just change the anchor position just find the value that lines up with the center. And all you really wanna do is just line this dot up as center as possible. It looks good there. And then obviously now we're just gonna have to change the default position a bit. And let's now keyframe the scale and the opacity. Go a few frames forward. I'm gonna bring those keyframes there and then go back and we can scale it down a bit. And then we're also gonna change that opacity to 50. I like these, easy ease them. And now when we play that, you have some animated text in the background. If you do want to go ahead and add an effect to the layer, I think it's cool sometimes to pre-compose. And now if you go to that pre-compose layer, let's say for an example, we just add Gaussian blur. If we drag that on, now it's affecting everything in the sequence. So if you wanted it to be like blurry here and then get unblurry, it gives that illusion of like the text is more there because the whole sequence is being blurred and it's not just affecting the clip itself. Now you can go through and now add on any effects to this composition and it will affect everything inside the pre-comp. The only other thing is if you want the text to be motion tracked to yeet or an object that's moving in your scene you would just instead of using track camera you would use track motion and then you would find a point there's not really a good point in this video that can show you an example of but you would just go through track forward it's not going to do the best job right now but you can see it's tracked to his nose roughly and then you would create a null object and then edit the target apply to that null object click ok click apply click ok let's just type how again and now we just see this pick whip thing and drag it to the null so now instead of the text floating in the background making it look like it's actually floating in space. It's going to be following the movement of our subject. So now when we play it, you can see how it's moving with the motion of our subject. And you can use those same exact animation techniques with this style of tracking, and it's gonna do the exact same thing. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, be sure you're subscribed with that notification bell ring. Like I said, I'm uploading every single day until this channel hits 100K. If you haven't liked the video already, go ahead and do me a favor. And if you have a video suggestion idea, leave it down below in the comments. That's all I got for you guys on this one. Peace.